All right. First descendant update 1.1.4. Greetings, descendants. Here's the details of the first descendant update 1.1.4 on Thursday, October 10th. This is affecting all platforms. So update 1.1.4. New descendant is Ultimate Freyna. Woo! She's finally here. <laughs> At a Ultimate Freyna. Use Ultimate Freyna or Ultimate Freyna will activate a Freyna character quest line. So for if you want to do the story, make sure you log in with a Freyna and you'll get a prompt on where to go from there. When Freyna's character quest is fully complete, you will receive the ch um, chest attachment Old Wounds. So you'll get a little medallion for completing it. Uh, Ultimate Freyna skill modules. So these are the and, and, uh, trans mods, the red ones. Join the alliance. Uh, Amna Kitty, thank you so much for the follow. Uh, toxic Moisture, Freyna's passive skill Contagion links its change to Toxic Mixture. When equipped, the skill module will trigger Narcosis instead of Room Zero Trauma. As enemies gain more stacks than Necrosis, your firearm attack increases when you shoot at them, and if an enemy reaches max stacks, your firearm critical hit rate also increases. This is basically a bossing... Um, um, mod, which is going to be very cool. Venom Injection. Uh, defense mechanism is changed to Venom Injection. Venom Injection consumes resources, recover your shields, and increase skill power modifier. When inflicting corrosion on enemies, enemies flick with corrosion suffer reduced toxic resistance, making them more vulnerable for this toxic attacks. So if you want to just have a debuff ability, use this one. Uh, add an ultimate Freyna's amorphic materials. Here's the list. Of them now. Here's here's a big change. Update added a A B variant. So we we have um before this update we had like a 1.1 dash A. Now we have 101 dash A B variants forming for material patterns for these numbers right here. You can acquire ultimate frames, enhanced cells, blueprints, stabilizers, spiral catalysts, and codes for these morphic materials. So there was speculation in our community. Um, we were talking last night. That um, the code or the blueprint would it be locked behind the new um, Colossus. Thankfully, that is not the case. And it looks like they've come back to morphic um, versions. So the Haley option of grinding um, <laughs> invasions, as I was speculating, and I'm glad I was correct, that they got received from the community that that was not the best idea for grinding descendants. So. They move back to <laughs> morphic material, just add a different variation to that. So you'll get more um, materials in your inventory. So that's going to be fun. Uh, new modules for Haley skills uh, super cooled Cooper rounds. Use a unique weapon, reduces fire and attack and fire rate, but increases weak point damage in return. Also, successful weak point attacks recover your shield instead of your MP. Increases weak point damage increase on firing the unique weapons, but increase against successful weak point attacks. So uh, Cobra was talking about the yesterday that he was talking with some people um, on weak point damage for Haley. So this super cooled rounds would actually help with that build. Very cool. Uh, cryogenic cluster shots. The cryo effects uh, change to cryogenic. Using fireman attacks to an enemy flex for the cryogenic deals additional AOE damage to nearby enemies, making this a useful skill module for clearing out common monsters. So my turret build might be very helpful for this mobbing build right here. Very cool. Uh, you putting a team together to farm for Ultimate Freyna? Yeah, possibly. Uh, after this, we'll have to see. Uh, update new modules. Added new ultimate and rare modules. There we go. To existing module groups, strike crit hit damage. Luck is critical hit damage. And firearm critical hit damage. We've added modules that can enhance skill power Firearm attack to diversify the selection of weapons and descendants with low crit rates and critical hit damage. Ooh, Freyna is one of those descendants that has low crit rates. So these mods might be very helpful. Very cool. RK Tech, Hyper Focus. I'm not going to go through this um, list here. Um, so just heads up, but, but there's a lot of... Looks like different modules here to help with uh, some crit buffing, which is pretty cool. We actually might have to test those out when if we get them and might help with 
taking a little bit more crit damage, more of those uh, orange numbers right here. Uh, let's see, four new. You got the four new red mods, took 432 red mods. Okay. All right, that's good to know. All right, so Deathstalker, this is the new Colossus name. Add a new hard difficulty void intercept boss, Deathstalker. You must successfully intercept Gluttony before you can battle Deathstalker. So for those who have not beaten Gluttony yet, you need to beat him to get to Deathstalker, which is, again, not surprising. Intercept Deathstalker to collect the Disoriented Resolve set, the Invader set, and the Blueprint for Ultimate Frost Water. So if you're looking for that new Ultimate um, weapon, which is actually is not too bad, this says the Blueprint for Frost Water. So uh, if you want to get the full weapon, you'll have to do him. Uh, Deathstalker external component set. So this is the set that drops from him. The two-piece set increases fire and attack when using an assault rifle or submachine guns. Ooh, that's very nice. Uh, two four-piece set increases toxic skill power potential to the amount of HP loss. Recover shields every time you use inflicted debuff on the enemy. Successful destroying the parts of Colossus grants the exaltation effect, which under the effect will skill tax fire projectiles that deal additional toxic damage applied to this um, location effects of the Colossus. Nice. This location effect weakens all attacks of Colossus incrementally as it stacks. So basically, these this is a major debuff bossing uh, set, which is pretty cool. Uh, invader set, 2P set, increased max shields, and 4P set, defeating enemy increases skill duration based on the number of stacks, also increases tech skill power modifier and dimension skill power modifier. Interesting. Okay. Now here's a look of the new Frost Watcher ultimate weapon here. We've seen that in the trailer, we've talked about a few times and all that. Uh, it lands a critical hit on the enemy from a certain distance, grabs a cold surveillance effect. Hitting weak points of enemies beyond a certain distance grants the sub-zero sensation effect. Cold surveillance reduces the enemy's chill resistance incrementally as it stacks. Sub-zero sensation increases your chill skill power. Defeating an enemy grants the chill synchronization effect, while under the effect, the movement speed reduction due to Haley's cold fish is ignored. Okay, so this will be very helpful because when Haley uses her third ability, her movement speed is slowed, but that is pretty cool that this one does not affect it. But yeah, uh, the devs mentioned that this would be very helpful with Viesa and Haley, but knowing the community, we'll probably find some way of not just using this weapon on those two descendants. <laughs> we'll probably find some busted move, one descendant that's like, hey, sure it's Frost, but we'll find a way to make it like super OP, you know. Now this one I am looking forward to. Highest difficulty operation is now at 400%. Uh, before this update, we were at 250%. So we got a major upgrade. The new highest difficulty dungeon has been added to 13 infiltration operations. Uh, Magister Labs. Uh, so it looks like all of them have been um, added. I don't see any ones that are currently missing. Uh, White Knight only has one of these. Okay, so there are two that are missing. Okay, so most of the infiltrations have been as these. A hard difficulty underscore multiply is available for dungeons where the invasions have occurred. After clearing the invasion, you can still use the 400% score multiplier until the next invasion refresh. Uh, the type of rewards for highest difficulty infiltration operations are essentially the same. Defeating commanders named monsters give additional standard ETA vouchers. So... They did mention in a dev note that we're going to, if you do the 400 ones, you're going to get tokens for this new um, vendor ETA-0, which they'll cover in a little bit. But it's only in the 400 one. So you might have to get a build for survival for this one. At completion wars, you'll receive high precision exchange components. Cool. So here is ETA-0. Now, be mindful. Uh, this is available every Friday Monday through Monday in Albion. It is currently Thursday at the time of this video, and so that is tomorrow. I am planning on doing a weekly Friday video. It'll probably be in short form content that I'll be posting on my um, platforms, 
and just pretty much go through. Basically, uh, for those who have been here a while, it's basically like, like a Xur in Destiny or Balkatir in uh, Warframe. So this um, is open up basically on daily resets and all that, which is pretty cool. So what can you do with ETA-0? You can sell blueprints. You can sell blueprints you have available from Mastering Rank 10. And as we saw from my free to play account, you basically get to 11 just doing the story, which is pretty cool. So basically this opens up to anyone who's done the story arc, which is pretty cool. Exchange infiltration operation rewards. You can purchase various items from standard ETA vouchers. Standard ETA vouchers can be attained by completing infiltration operations with a 400%, which I had mentioned it before, skill score multiplier. Exchange supplies, you can purchase various items with the premium ETA vouchers. Premium ETA vouchers can be obtained by selling blueprints. So for those who have duplicate um, components, like for Blair, if you've been playing with a friend and you got like five of them, you can turn them these into ETA, get the vouchers, and then you can buy those, use those vouchers to buy blueprints that you need. You can carry up to 600 vouchers and premium ETA vouchers. Pretty cool. Standard ETA vouchers and premium are found in your inventory and do not take up consumable slots. Look at that. Yes, that is very nice. Does not take up consumable slots. So you can have up to 600, which is nice. Uh, added the feature to dye the hair of head skins that showed hair. Additional 44 hairs dyes are dying hair. But this is a list right here. So if you have a skin that has a custom hairstyle, you can actually uh, add some color to that, which is cool. Uh, added new products, added the ultimate descendant bundles, ultimate frame bundle, and premium ultimate frame bundle. Now here is a director's comment. We accept the feedback from our descendants regarding the exclusive spawn effects and back attachments in the previous ultimate bundles. In response to this feedback, we've made the spawn effects and back attachments in the new Ultimate Frame Bundle available for universal use. Moving forward, we apply the same principle to all spawn effects and back attachments in the future releases. And so what they're saying is that in, I think it was in 1.1.3 or 2, I'm not sure, but uh, recently they made it to where the Ultimate Descendant bundles that you got for Lepic, Ajax, was exclusive to those descendants only because people were able to use the glay spawning and back piece for uh, ajax and vice versa and they wanted to have show it unique and so they sort of restricted it but apparently um, people didn't like that and so they're basically undoing what they did additionally we're working on improving the exclusive spawn effects and back attachments from previous bundles to make them universally usable once this improvement is complete, all previous purchase spawn effects and back attachments will be universally available. So right now, it's still exclusive, but probably in the maybe next week or the following week, they'll make a update that any ultimate skins that you have will be cross compatible with different descendants. Thank you for your valuable feedback, and we continue to strive to prov provide more satisfying service. So pretty cool. So we've added some new skins here, which we will check in the shop. I'm not going to go over those names just for the sake of time. So for miscellaneous for Halloween, Albion is decorated with Halloween decorations for the update on Thursday, which is today until Wednesday, the 30th, you can receive Halloween themed emotes each week by logging to the game for details. Please refer to Halloween login event notice, which has been released after the maintenance, which we already covered. So basically log in each week, you'll be good. But this is the, when you log in for the first time, you will be greeted by this. If you go down, you'll see that. Pretty fun decorations here. All right, now let's get into the hotfix 1.1.4. Uh, content improvements, add a recruit tab to the chat. You can post to recruit or apply for a party in the tab. Ooh. Change the immunity gimmick for some named monster for destroying spheres to destroying summoned objects. Okay, so they're trying to, as they mentioned, people are not liking the spheres mechanic. So they're trying to make different ways of still having a immune phase, so to speak, but then make it a little bit easier for people. So for this guy destroying all the summoned toxic explosives or remove its immunity, 
turrets and clones. Ooh, that's a cool way of doing it. So it still has you being a little bit more active on where the explosives are, but if you're doing a bunny or something, you'll be a little bit faster. Ooh, I actually like that change. That's pretty cool. Colossus no longer strafe too far out of the battlefield during instead of battles. Please and thank you. I'm so happy they changed that. Because sometimes when you're running a swamp poker, he just runs to the end of the map. And he's just like, well, this is fun. <laughs> Add additional makeshift camps to the shipment base, the hatchery, Mount Thompson, White Knight Gulch. Okay, so there's going to be added new uh, fast travel points. So if you've already completed, if you already completed all the uh, area maps for the little doggies, as I like to call them, the little fast travel points, they added more. So definitely take um, take a look at the hatchery um, in White Nine Gulch. They have added some new ones there. Uh, change the location of fusion reactors in the hatchery in the White Nine Gulch. Okay, interesting. New location. Uh, conditions of returning camp after aborting mission. Uh, change the condition of returning to camp after aborting missions. Do, do. Interesting. Infiltration operations now reward additional firearm proficient XP. Hey. Okay. So I think they may have fixed the issue that some people were saying they were not getting enough XP for the weapons. But maybe when we run these, we'll see a difference there. Some infiltration operations now reward more descendant XP. Kingston Slumber Valley. Oh, so they're trying to level the playing field instead of just running bio labs. They're giving you a little bit more options. Ooh, we'll have to do some testing on that one, chat. We'll have to see. So we'll have to see if we can get a reset. Uh, if once we get Freyna, we go some from level one, we do a reset. We do one of these and see which XP gives us a lot. Ooh, that's good. Because Biolabs is nice, but having a little bit of variety is very nice too. Uh, they should have added a mini ban for players that just leave mid Colossus battle. Yeah. That they might be working on that. I uh, fixed the main quest to reveal um, reward level 100 firearm reactors and enhanced materials. Ooh, that's very nice. Yeah, playing on our first um, free to play account, we were in the 90s once we uh, finished the story, but getting us 100 before doing a hard mission, that's a nice change. Players now revive with 100% shields from down but not out, waiting for a revive state. Ooh, that's going to be helpful. Instead of being downed instantly. That's going to be helpful. Now, players now have three three seconds to cancel the start of a private operation to intercept battles, infiltrations, yada, yada, yada. Ooh, that's going to be very nice, too. Players have three seconds. So, yeah, there are, I've run into times where I queued up for something. It's like, oh, no, no, I need to cancel. And I, can, and I can't. But that's cool. That's a way, good way of doing it. Add a restart button to HUD to enable an immediate restart after the end of intercept battles is located below the move to Albion button. Oh, nice. So instead of having to escape, go to your previous, go to so many clicks, you just pull down R and reset. Oh, that's going to be so nice. The Deleted the underused 150 in off infiltration operations. So a lot of people will jump to 250. So 150 no longer exists. <laughs> oh, man, that's funny. Uh, descendants change the missions that drop Freyna stabilizers. When Freyna uses a skill to inflict room, zoom, room zero trauma, he now has inflicts toxic reaction, panic, despair, and decay or nightmare, depending on the skill used. Ah, so there are different types of debuffs now. Cool. Plague armor effects grants by Freyna skills, defense mechanism, toxic stimulus, and now renewed when skills are used again. Hmm. Uh, Kyle improved Kyle's uh, repulsion, dash, and collision instinct skills to hit environmental objects such as gas cylinders. Hmm. Interesting. So, you want to hit gas and. Huh? Okay. I'm not sure if that was an improvement or. Hmm. I wonder if that was a mistypo or something. <laughs> SML can now use a time bomb skill when shooting a firearm or using other skills. That's very helpful. Nice. Uh, UI UX changes. The location of request NPCs is now displayed during some quests. Fix the maximum target score for infiltration operations. Always displayed in the right UI. Okay, that will be helpful. Invasion Dungeons info now displays the text minimum required in the number of rewards in the main reward. Okay. 
Uh, research lists, enhanced levels, displayed owner indicators on low level research as well as descendant research, whatever the research results exits and how much. Uh, enhanced level information. Oh, wait a second. Does that mean it shows you how many uh, enhancement levels when you're crafting? We'll have to check that out, chat. That looks pretty cool. Uh, miscellaneous add reactors to hard difficulty fields, allowing you to obtain when needed in obtaining reactors, not as a rotation reward. In hard difficulty missions, outposts, or fusion, you will require reactors with specific attributes in our case based on each battlefield. So, okay, so there's going to be hard sets. Instead of having a rotation, looks like, um, not as a rotation ward. So it's guaranteed no matter what week it is, you're going to get non attribute X tech. So um, either some kind of tech one, Kingston, Echo Swamp, Grand Square. So these areas here, you have to take a look at this. Um, chart here but wherever you go there you're going to be a have a guaranteed one okay that's nice because having to wait for a certain week rotation for a particular one oh that's going to be so nice so toxic tech so for you frame um grinders out there you need to go to vespers or fortress the timberfall in the frozen valley okay so timberfall in frozen valley will be a guaranteed drop of a toxin in a tech reactor that's pretty cool uh roly polies and kingfishers summoned by colossus and intercept battles now use melee attacks less frequently <laughs> yes thank you being stun locked by them very annoying very annoying <laughs> lower the difficulty of intercept battle gluttony okay as we mentioned last night gluttony is going to get nerfed now here is what his nerf is Reduce gluttony's HP in attack. Impurities now reduce the wipe attack gauge further. Reduce the speed in which the wipe attack gauge fills up. Removes the ice effect inflicted when impurity explodes. Uh, okay, so there you go. So less health, less attack damage. And it's a little bit easier to keep his rage meter down. That's going to be nice for people who are getting it. It was fun crushing him. Yeah, mm-hmm. Increase the expansion limit of equipment inventory slots by 200. Previous expandables is 1 to 1,000. Now expandables is to 1,200. So for those who were um, having it, problems with inventory space, you now have 200 more spaces to go. Change the image of Obby's Bubble, Bo um, Boogie Spray, Haley Sniper Spray, Map Image of Echo Swamp, and the Descendant Menu Visuals for Vobby, Ultimate Vobby, some of the icons have been updated. Cool. Uh, bug fixes, uh, issues where characters would get stuck or could not move um, improperly in some world regions of Kingston, Sarah Lance, Hagios, and Fortress. Yeah, um, running with some people, yeah, I'm glad they got that fixed. Uh, fix an issue with the Forgottenness during the Sarah Lance Invasion event where it's possible to move the next zone before it starts. Yeah, ran into that issue as well. No longer possible to leave the starting area mid-air maneuvering in the start of intercept battles. So people would use midair maneuvering to get past that starting barrier. Interesting. Dying during an encrypt vault minigame now causes the minigame to fail. Oh no. So people would die during the minigame. Oh man, that, that's horrible. Fix an issue with the opening map at the same time as encrypted vault minigame starts left the game unresponsive. Oh, I feel bad for whoever found that issue out. <laughs> Fix an issue when it's not possible to use the keyboard and mouse and gamepad at the same time. Hmm. Okay. Fix an issue with the invasion wards and fortress region for not being tracked properly. Okay. Yeah, I was wondering about that. Interesting. For descendants, fix an issue with skills using a by point at location could be used out of bounds on terrains. Hmm. Uh, water intake supply moisture effects could not be received in certain situations with standing in puddles created by Vobby skills. Yes, I ran into that um, doing a few gluttony runs as well, um, where it was not procking that. Pretty cool. Uh, in SMOs, RK explosion or creative explosions where there's a network lag cause the animation display abnormally. Okay. 
let's see. Expiry at detect time of SMO's uh, guided landmine removal of time mine. The blast kill button displayed the number of stacks remaining. Uh, Haley Zena skill, which is her sniper, omits a phase that, um, stating that the launcher was excluded. Haley Storm Snare did not deal damage when her character was not exposed to, um, exposed due to terrain. Interesting. Uh, VS says Frost Shards could not hit objects such as glass hit. Uh, hmm, okay. Luna's skill sound could not play when opening the selected send the screen when Luna is quit with her weapon. Oh, okay, so if people are trying to do hot swap things, it was not working. Okay. Luna is quit with her default skill module noise surge. The animation of the skill button at the bottom now appears matching the notes. Hmm, that's a cool change. Uh, animation effects of Freyna was displayed incorrectly. Plague armor effects, defense mechanisms, could, skills could both be granted. Oh, so stacking. Interesting. With this change, only the plague armor effect grants last will remain in fact of the duration. Contagion, toxic simulation, narcosynthesis. Okay. So equipment and modules. Fix an issue with the module disseminator and le lethal infection did not activate due to certain debuffs. Mmm, okay. Additional damage increase per enhanced level. The last stand module could not apply correctly. Uh, Preemptive strike module will not apply to targets with shields. Okay, so apparently they're this one here, the module was not proccing correctly. Good, they got that fixed. Uh, UI and UX changes. Fix an issue with the focusing effect did not display on the map when you're clicking go to the acquisition info. Uh, let's see, web browser window, I'm going to see if I can just skim through these. Cash store, there was no product available. Abnormal messages. Uh, titles displaying abnormally. So there's a lot of bug fixes, which is very good. Um, unstable energy could not, oh, okay. This one is right here. Uh, so fix an issue with the unstable energy purple spheres. So when, for those who have not done Glenn yet, when he goes into rage, um, there's these purple spheres that you have to detonate on top of Gluttony to be able to get him out of rage. So these, this is what these purple spheres are talking about. Uh, did not cause chain explosions with each other in the intercept battle. So um, sometimes if you get them close together, you could go boom, 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 and instantly knock him out. But apparently some situations, they would not do that. Okay. Uh, HP orb increased max issue by one. All right. Uh, oh, fix an issue with awarding mastery rank XP. Wait, hang on. Fix an issue with mastery rank XP being reward based on the previous level with a weapon proficiency level increase. When progressing from proficiency level one to two, mastery rank XP corresponding to level one, not two, have been rewarded. Oh, interesting. I wonder if that's why people were having some issues with. Um, firearm leveling. Fix an issue where you cannot gain max rate XP for levels to one when Bunny was attained through quests. Unawarded mastery rank XP can begin after the update. Okay, so that means we might get a free mastery rank chat. That might be interesting. So when you log in, you might get a free mastery rank notice. Uh, fix an issue with the spawn effects not displaying for battle supplies for battle passes. Battle pass challenges, counter chats, but not countered correctly. Yep, some people were complaining about that in my community. Fix an issue with one calorie consumed when clicking affirm with zero seconds remaining in the acceleration research. I'll take my level in Mar 25. <laughs> uh, calorie consumed due to the issue before that they'd be reimbursed via in game mail. Once the reimbursement is complete, you'll provide details in the October known issued notice. So thank you. Wow, that was a huge update. So we had a hotfix as well as a lot of new stuff. Mainly quality of life changes, bug fixes. Ooh, that was really good, chat. What do you think? I need to get a drink of water. That's why I think. 